All right. Our, finally, we got to our last question in Chapter 9. Of course, this last one has to be one of the most uh, useful, uh, maybe not even useful, but one of the most important that we will see later on as well. Uh, so we talked about waveguides earlier. Now, what happens when we have a, a resonant cavity, which is produced by closing off two ends of a rectangular waveguide? Hmm, interesting. All right, so we close them off at z equals zero and z equals d, making a perfectly conducting empty box. Interesting. Okay. Show that the resonant frequencies for both TE, transverse electric, and transverse magnetic modes are given by WLMN is equal to C pi square root L over D squared plus M over A squared plus N over B whole thing squared for integers L, M, and N. Find the associated electric and magnetic fields. Okay. First and foremost, we know what we're looking for. We've seen this set up before. Now we just have to tidy it up. We know that we're looking for solutions of the form E equal E naught uh, spatial dimensions as a function of spatial dimensions, E to the negative I omega T. Again, we're being, uh, you know, we're being uh, propagated in some spatial direction, which is highlighted in the amplitude E. Again, we're only caring about the real part. And that uh, E to the negative I omega T is allowing us to understand at what frequency Okay, and plus exponentials are easy to work with, so let's play along. Uh, what this does is kind of separate the spatial and time dimensions into their own categories, or variables into their own categories. So we'll mimic that for the magnetic field too. All right, so our, sub so our boundary conditions that we need, since we're dealing with differential equations, E parallel equals zero, and B perpendicular equals zero. And that's going to matter depending on what face you're on. So, this happens at all surfaces, and so that's subject to change. Now, let's play this game. Maxwell's equations in a waveguide, the, again, uh, uh, it's empty, it's conducting, so charge is zero inside, and the current is zero inside. So, our equations reduce down pretty nice. We see here that if we plug in these perspective uh, forms, uh, the divergence of E just you know, the e to the i omega t goes to zero, or we can divide that over to the zero side, get rid of it. So what we're really saying is that the divergence of e naught equals zero, divergence of b naught equals zero. Similarly, the curl of e, uh, well, curl of e gives us e naught with the only vector, and then every part has an e to the i omega t. Similarly, on the right-hand side with the time derivative, what we see is that we take the time derivative of the e to the negative i omega t, which gives us a negative i omega, um, and that simplifies down with the negative in the uh, Maxwell of the equation. Notice that the e to the i negative i omega t cancels in all of these cancels out in all of these things, so we're just left with spatial dimensions after. Wonderful. Similarly, the curl of b naught or b leaves us with curl of b naught. And negative i omega over c squared e naught. Okay, clearly I think we know what we're looking for. Some vector of the form uh, that satisfies these equations. So we can drop the subscript for the sake of uh, not having a cumbersome notation. Um, and like it says, now we're just trying to solve the time independent equation since the time parts canceled based on the form we chose. So we know that the curl of E is equal to I omega B, and it follows that I can get B once I know E. Fair enough. So let's concentrate on finding what E is. Again, this trick was used before, and we can use this nifty trick called back cab, which is a triple product of a curl and a curl, the curl of a curl. Um, I guess we're all in the gym today doing curls. Uh, so apply back cab. We know from Maxwell's equations that the divergence of E goes to zero, and we're left with uh, the Laplacian on E. So that's a negative uh, Laplacian E. Similarly, if we didn't apply the back cab rule, we just took the curl of a curl. Well, we could just take the curl of B, or excuse me, the curl of I omega B, which we found in the set of modified equations, and that I omega is a constant, so push it out. 
and we get that I omega. Uh, is, uh, so after we push it out, then we get the curl of B, which we found to be negative I omega over C squared E. So now we have a two-dimensional uh, derivative equation or two-dimensional differential equation um, for E. So this tells us here that we have negative uh, del squared E is equal to negative I squared omega squared over C squared E. Perfectly fine. Let's be very attentive that the negative from the I squared cancel with the negative on the right-hand side of the E, not the left-hand side. So after we solve and simplify everything, we get uh, del squared E is equal to negative omega C, omega over C squared E. And so what we have is something of the form where we have del uh, squared for EX is equal to uh, negative omega over C squared a EX and then so on and so forth. So we have to break that down into three separate equations for the three different dimensions. Holy cow, what a mess. Um, yeah, welcome to the fun. And we could solve each of these if we assume that E of X, the one component E of X is a function of a separable solution of X, Y, and Z. We've solved these separable solutions before. Plug it in, divide by X, Y, Z, and we get uh, to where we can separate everything with the separation constant. So we get the DX or D squared X over D uh, little X squared is equal to separation constant negative KX squared. Um, so on and so forth. Uh, there should be a little note here that I'll type up that the this is all for the e x component of the of the electric field. So with that, we cannot assume that k x goes with e x, k y goes with e y, so on and so forth. What we'll show later is that it doesn't really matter, but it is important to note that the k x, k y, k z all go to the e of x. Um, component, and then by uh, by analogy, or we'll solve by a similar case that it won't matter for the other two components, uh, which previously we didn't have to deal with since we only were dealing with the uh, scalar after the fact. But okay, nonetheless, I'll type it up. So our after the fact, our general solution for this for the e x component of the e field is this product to A, cos A sine, B cosine, times C sine, D cosine, times E sine, F cosine. Okay, now all important uh, boundary conditions we need to apply. We know that the parallel for, uh, for this EX component has to equal zero at the boundaries. So this tells us that EX equals zero at Y equals zero and Z equals zero. Okay, fair enough, plug those in. Uh, and we see that we get parts of uh, A and B that just divide to zero, so we can't evaluate any of those. We know that sine of zero goes to zero, and so we know that for a fact, the C and E terms just cancel zero <coughs> uh, before we can evaluate anything. So all that's left on the left-hand side is D and, and F have to equal to the right-hand side of zero, so D equals F equals zero. No big deal. We've seen that before uh, independently. And then, um, of course, we have to have it at the other boundary, so y equal b and z equal d, which leads to ky, because that's since we know that d and f are 0, we need to solve for c and e now. And that only holds true sine uh, at those positions are only 0 when they're a integer uh, factor of pi. So that's why we, that's how we got ky equal n pi over b and kz equal n pi over d. Similarly, we can conclude for the other two components by analogy that we have ex, ey, z, except that in the x direction, a and b need to be found. In the y direction, we have uh, c and d that need to be found. And in the z direction, we have e and f that need to be found. Okay, again, all by analogy. Here, kx is just equal to m pi over a, just to keep up with the notational consistency. Okay, um, now that we're stuck there, what we need to do is use the divergence of e equals zero to find the other uh, uh, coefficients, excuse me. So with that, take the divergence. We see that we just get a factor of kx out of 
both the uh, x ter- out of the x terms. Uh, be mindful of the minus sign with the cosine derivatives. And we get a ky for the y and a kz for the z. And again, it has to equal zero. So in particular, if we're putting in uh, x equals zero um, with the derivative there, we see that uh, a equals zero, everything else cancels out, good to go. Uh, so that makes life easy. Likewise, setting y equal to zero, we see that c equals zero, and z equals zero, we see that e equals zero. So in order for the divergence of e to equal zero, it follows that we have uh, this bracket, which we factored out a bunch of signs from, negative b x, b k x minus d k y minus f k z times all the signs on the right-hand side equals zero. Well, they cancel out when you divide them over. We have a negative sign attributed to that, but the big thing here is that BKX and DKY and FKZ all have to sum to zero. Okay, so with that, no big deal, but here I am stipulating that once we simplify this down, our electric field looks like uh, I color coordinated it for blue, red, and purple for the different components that we have. Um, X, Y, and Z, since I can't really make this look good in any other way, where K, X, K, Y, and K, Z are defined as such. Um, again, M, N, and L are integer numbers, and then our stipulation for the fact to make the divergence zero is that B, K, B, K, X, D, K, Y, and F, K, Z have to equal zero. Those are stipulations to use, not a big deal otherwise. Um, but you notice that you have a cosine in the direction of the um, in the unit vector direction. So cosine kx and the x at cosine ky and the y at and so on. Okay, whatever is next is going to be quick work because we know that b is equal to negative i over omega after you rationalize the denominator uh, times the curl of e. So just plug in the curl components. We have bx, by, and bz. We've seen this set up before. Take the derivatives of the respective parts and uh, simplify down. Um, you do that for x, y, and z, so I'll let you read through that. Uh, I would say pretty, you know, copy and paste, nothing really too dangerous to deal with. Um, and then once we tidy that up, we see that B, the B field, color coordinated again, we see that we have f, k, y minus d, k, z, and then we have uh, uh, only a sign now in the direction vector that we have, so kx, sine kx and the x hat, and then we have the uh, coefficients b, k, z, and all that so forth. And then sine, k, y, and the y hat. And, you know, you can read it through. Color coordinate like this makes it really easy. And what we need to note, though, is that these automatically satisfy the boundary conditions. Meaning that the parallel field of b is equal to zero. Uh, bx equals zero at x equals zero. Well, is that true? Plug in x equals zero. Sine is equal to zero. Cool. Everything on that is zero x equal a, and x equal a, plugged it in, we already see that uh, from before, kx is equal to m pi a, so if you plug in a, you get uh, m pi, and that equals zero everywhere, so you're good. Similarly, by equals zero at uh, zero and b, bz equals zero at z equals zero and d, so we're good there. Now all that's left to do is try to tidy up these... Uh, coefficients with the divergence of b so go ahead and take the spatial divergence uh derivatives rather and you see that x gives us a factor of kx y gives us a factor of ky and the d to, or z derivative gives us a factor of uh kz so after all that's said and done let's see what we can uh simplify it out you notice that we have a cosine in all of them now so we can right factor that and we have a negative i over omega in all of them, so we can left factor that. And uh, yeah, bro, now we can, you know, distribute the kx for the x hat or the, the x direction. So we see that we get a purple and red there. The ky for the y direction, so we get a blue and a purple there. And a z for the, a kz for the z direction, so we get a, another red and another blue. Notice that all these things magically cancel. Um, hence the color coordination of it. And we see that that bracket goes to zero with all the cancellations. So if that goes to zero, the whole thing goes to zero. What a wonderful surprise. 
Um, okay, maybe not a surprise. Everything works out the way it does for a reason. At least in this approach. So yes, all of Maxwell's equations are satisfied. And they meet the boundary conditions, so we're good. So for TE modes, we pick EZ equals 0, and so F equals 0. Hence the BKX plus DKY equals 0 when we're referencing the electric field. Leaving the overall amplitudes on the overall amplitude undetermined for some given L, M, and N. For TM modes, we want BZ equals zero. So if that's the case. We go back and it's all that's left there is DKX minus BKY equals zero. Okay, notice how we have some little crossover there. Again, leaving only one amplitude undetermined. Since we have BKX and DKY plus FKZ equals zero from the stipulation on the electric field. All right, I think we're pretty good there. Um, so in either case, uh, we need TE LMN or TM LMN. The frequency is given by KX squared plus KY squared plus KZ squared is equal to the uh, square of omega over C or omega over c squared, solve this for omega, uh, which means we have to uh, multiply c squared over. And now we can plug in everything. Again, we already color coordinated for x, blue, y, red, and uh, purple for z. And now it's just a matter of simplifying it down, really. Everything, uh, uh, we can square every component in those parentheses, so we pull out a pi squared out of every bracket, factor that out, at a, factor that out of everything, and uh, now we can take the square root of both sides. Again, it has to be a positive. It makes no sense to have a negative angular frequency. Um, at least not for our uh, considerations here uh, with the given situation. Um, and then you see here that we just get uh, WLM is equal to C pi once we factor it out of the square root since both of them are squared. And then we get M over A squared n over b squared and l over d squared exactly what we uh hypothesized would be the case given the statement of the question and with that we're done with chapter nine but uh definitely be aware that we will see these again